What's up, people? Um, yo, I thought about making this video while I'm making a TikTok react video because there's a lot of things I want to talk about. And um, they have a lot to do. This video ain't going to be as long. This is basically going to be a pre-topic. I'm going more into detail when I do my theory episode. But I was thinking about some things. Right? And so we're going to go and kind of do research. I'm starting with this painting that Leonardo da Vinci done. That looked like a black dude right there. Anyways, that Leonardo da Vinci done of the 13 Apostles. Because this has very very good significance to what I'm going to talk about today in theory. Okay, so what if this painting is connected to the people who actually rule this world? The Illuminati ruling the world is a fallacy. It doesn't exist. Illuminati died out years ago. The Freemasons got together with the Roman Catholic Church and destroyed them. Because Illuminati, which means to illuminate, was trying to illuminate people. Let me, I'm going to just give you a basic of what I've learned about the Illuminati. The Illuminati basically, the Bavarian Illuminati, was basically a group of people started by Wasp, but I, I hope I said his name right, who basically was trying to go against the Roman Catholic Church who didn't want to teach freedom. Let's basically put it like that. And what happened was, was that the Roman Catholics didn't like this. Because the Roman Catholics, they wanted power. They wanted control. And they wanted to use the Christian faith to do that. And so what they did was, they got together with the Freemasons in America. And they had the Freemasons get into the, I can't give any details, but get into the Illuminati and tear the Illuminati from inside out until they finally caught up with Wasput and they made sure that the Illuminati was destroyed. So the Illuminati destroyed almost 200, uh, 150 to 200 years ago. The so-called Illuminati that runs the world now is not the Illuminati. Basically what the Freemasons did was they used their enemy to create an enemy that's not even the original enemy they went against. So now anything... Because, see, Weisbutt, Bavarian Illuminati, represented free, articulate thought, which goes back to the principles of Kemet. If you notice, and you also notice if you see a picture of, and I want you to go look it up for yourselves. If you see a picture of um, Albert Einstein, who's said to be one of the smartest individuals in history. And I say one of the smartest individuals in history because he's not the smartest individual in history. But one of the smartest. Uh, we can go back and talk about him, Imhotep if we got to. Um, he has comedic statues in his own office. So. This is the thing. So, this is what I'm kind of thinking. <coughs> Sorry. Is that that set, the, that Illuminati set, that Illuminati idea was used. See, the thing is, the least do everything in a double-edged sword. They don't ever do anything for one reason. There's always two or more reasons why they do something. And there's always two or more paths to why they do something. So not only did they use the Illuminati to 
make you think that it's this group, this secret society that's committing all the evils and sins of the world and that's worshiping Satan. But at the same time, they're making you think that it's evil for you to be illuminated. Let me explain. Let me break it down for you. If you are illuminated and if you have knowledge that's beyond reason and understanding, you can't be controlled. You can't be fooled. So what better use into creating a deity, Satan, the same Satan who's an anagram for Santa Claus. I mean, look it up. If you read Rain's words in Santa, it, it's basically saying Satan. Old Saint Nick, which you look up Saint Nicholas, you, you get even more on that. The thing is, is that S Satan represents for those who worship Satan, enlightenment, true knowledge, free from any type of control. But to everybody else, Satan worships a rebellious nature from God. So basically, when you look at the truth of it, it's basically they're using Satan and the Christian belief to tell you that it is evil for you to have free thought. It's evil for you to have articulate thought. It's evil for you to question things. You're supposed to accept anything that you're told without question, which is what the Roman Catholic Church does. And it's also what the Christian faith is, is to accept anything without question. You're not supposed to question anything in the Christian faith because if you do, it's considered a sin. What does that sound like? See, if you have free thought and you was to know the truth, let's, let's put it like this. There's no way that the history of the world can be dated back thousands and thousands of years. But when you date back Christianity, it only dates back to about, what, 6,000 years? Which is funny because it's around the same time in which the Caucasian race start to come into power. So basically, in retrospect, what these secret societies is telling you is that the God that's in the Bible created the earth when they came to exist and that the earth's history is actually their history, right? And any history before then is pagan. Because when you think about it, when they describe these different things, if you're not describing Christianity, then everything else is pagan. But yet, at the same time, we don't want to admit and realize that a lot of the so-called pagan rituals and beliefs are found in Christianity. Right? So, we're not going to dive deep into it until we get into the episode of Pharisee, but I only want to touch up on this picture right here. And how this picture relates to the secret societies and secret families. We know about the Rothschilds. We know about the Bavarians, the Rosicrucians, um, the uh, Rockefellers. Um, who else? Just different societies and different people who run the world. And these secret families. We know who they are. And we think these secret societies and these secret families, and we think that all of them are run by this secret group, which is the Rothschilds. And we think the Rothschilds run the world, right, basically. The Rothschilds don't run the world. The Rothschilds work for the ones who actually run the world. This is my theory. Let's look at these disciples. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And a twelfth one is seen as a female, right? But in later pictures, it's changed to a male, right? Because they don't want to let you know that one of the disciples that followed Christ was a female. Because then at that point, Christ wouldn't be seen as Christ. So anything that could connect Christ to being a human or having human nature is erased from the Bible, period. Now, let's go into some deep stuff, right? Some deep state stuff. This is what I think kind of what my theory is, is that 
Something's telling me don't say it. But like I said, this is for entertainment purposes only. I'm not saying that I'm telling the truth. This is just my theory. I'm not saying that I'm speaking facts. This is just my theory. Okay, so I got to make that clear. All right. Um, basically, there are actually 13 secret families. And each of those 13 secret families are... 12 of those secret families are direct descendants of the 12 disciples, while the 13th original bloodline family is supposed to be a direct descendant of Christ. The theory is, is that Christ and Mary Madeline uh, may have married and got a child, right? Now, if you think and have the belief that Christ will be married to Mary Madeline, who was later changed to be a prostitute, who really originally wasn't a prostitute. It was later on the Roman Catholic Church decided, I think it was at the Council of Nicaea, to make her out to be a prostitute. Because at this point, if Christ was seen to have relations with a woman, he wouldn't be seen as the son of God. Think about it. When we look at comedic culture, right, there was significance in the numbers of three, six, and nine. Significance in those numbers. Okay? Now, when we look at three, six, and nine, nine is the ultimate number. All right, let's look. I think it's the Fibonacci sequence. If I got that, let me look that up and see if. It, I I probably spelled it wrong, but maybe you know. Maybe uh, they can uh, help me with this and uh, basically, is it Fibonacci sequence? I think, I think this is what it is. I think, I think I'm right. Ah, yeah, I think that's it. Is it, is it Fibonacci? No, no, no. Each number is the sum of two preceding ones. No, that's not it. Dang it. It's, um... I know the Fibonacci sequence. I discovered the Fibonacci sequence when I was a kid, so... I didn't know it was called Fibonacci sequence. I thought I discovered something new. Um... Dang, what are the numbers 3, 6, and 9? It's, it's, it's basically... Okay, so the numbers, it says here in spirituality and philosophy, the number 369 is often associated with enlightenment and spiritual awakening. Many ancient cultures believe that this number represented the divine principles of creation in the universe and is used as a symbol of spiritual power and transformation. Now, when we talk about the number theories, it's something that Nikola Tesla believed in. So it says, according to Nikola Tesla, 3, 6, and 9 are the only numbers that can exist as energy without losing their identity. This is the concept supported by modern physics, which recognizes the importance of these numbers in the study of atomic and subatomic particles. Now, let's break down the numbers of 3, 6, and 9. 3, 6, and 9 can be seen as protons, neutrons, and electrons. With 3 being protons, 6 being neutrons, and number 9 meaning electrons. So... Here's the thing, <coughs> and don't worry, I'm still getting on the disciples, but I want to break down these numbers real quick and how they're going to relate to the disciples. Now, three in Christianity represent the tr Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The number six represents the number of man, which is supposed to be the sinful number. Now, the number nine in Christianity really don't have that much of a meaning except that is the highest number which in the in the uh, sequential sequence of the universe there is technically no solid number that is higher than nine nine is the ultimate number of completion but in christianity seven is seen as the number of completion don't know why because then we confirm to the georgian calendar which is seven days a week 
or is it Julian Calendar? I'm, I, I got to re-look that up, but you know what I'm talking about. So we seen it Saturday, which is Sat, S-A-T, Saturday as the day of rest in which God sat down from, you know, rest of his creation, which he created man on the sixth day. So man was technically created on the Friday, uh, which if we look up the meaning of fry, if we go even further, let's go further to it into it the meaning of the sixth day of the week the fifth working day okay so friday which is fifth is seen as the the fifth working day right so we try and look up so so basically friday is just the day of rest Okay, now let's look up these days of the week. Right? Don't worry, it all it all goes to back to the beginning of this painting what I'm talking about and you're going to see why. Friday, which is the 5th day, is seen as the day basically you're fried out from working a 5-day work week. And I'm going to tell you why it's a 5-day work week. Because Saturday, you're supposed to rest, which is supposed to be the Sabbath, the day is seen as holy. Sunday is supposed to be representing of the new rise, the new sun, the new week. Right? And then we go on to Monday, right? Which is the beginning of the work week. And then we go Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it starts all over again, right? Now, here's the thing. Why are there only seven days a week? But yet, we took the three and six to have meanings of numbers on their own, right? But wh why? Why not the nine? So let's see what the meaning of nine is in Christianity and see if it means anything. Now, the number nine also represents the fruits of God's Holy Spirit. These fruits are faithfulness, gentleness, goodness, joy, kindness, long suffering, love, peace, you know, and stuff like that. It said marks the beginning of the second year of the Israelite journey from Egypt to the promised land. Chapter nine tells. OK, no, that's not what I mean. OK, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Nine is considered a symbol of spiritual enlightenment and completion. Now, and then we talk about the holiest number is 70, which is in the Trinity, you know, you know. And then we talk about the letter Tet, which is the numeral of nine, the least common letter in the Torah. Let's see here. Nine is considered a sacred number in Hinduism. It's associated with completion, compassion, and spiritual enlightenment. It's also associated with a Hindu god, or Brahma. Who is the creator of the universe? So let's let's look at it like this. When we look at all the other cultures besides Christianity, number nine is seen as number completion. Why is it number nine the number of completion? I'm glad you asked me that question. The reason why nine is the number of completion is because nine is the highest single digit number within the sequence. The numbers don't start from one. The number starts from zero, which is no, which is the blank slate. It's the void. You have to in order to build you have to have a foundation zero is the foundation then you got the different layers from the foundation you got the first dimension the second dimension third dimension fourth dimension fifth dimension, all the way up to the ninth dimension now my theory is is that there are nine dimensions two of those dimensions are transitional dimensions the fourth dimension and the eighth dimension are seen as transitional dimensions right there's nine dimensions that we have access to, right? There are three extra holy dimensions. No, two extra holy dimensions that we don't have direct access to. So we have the Noid, the null dimension, which is the nothingness, which everything is based on. It is the canvas of existence in the universe. Then we have the first dimension, which is the atomic level. Then we have the second dimension and the third dimension, right? Then the fourth dimension is the transitional gateway. And then you have the fifth, sixth, and seventh dimension, which is the midway, 
right? That's where most of our conscious resides and go through. Then you have the eighth dimension, which is transition. Then you got the ninth to tenth and eleventh dimension, which is transitional dimension. The twelfth dimension is the dimension in which is the basically door gateway to the 13th dimension, which is the dimension the crater sits in. Now, remember, I said this is all just theory. I'm not saying it's fact. This is all just theory. Right? Now, when we go back and we talk about those different dimensions in numbers 3, 6, and 9, let me show you something. On each side of Christ, there's six disciples. Those six disciples are set in groups of three. So you got the numbers three and six. Right? <coughs> Sorry. Now, if we was to go ahead and pay attention to everything, and I mean everything, how many of these plaque ways are there? There's eight, nine, ten, eleven. How many dimensions did I say they were? The fourth dimension and the eighth dimension are seen as transitional gateway dimensions. So you have the first, second, third dimension, fifth, sixth, seventh dimension, ninth, tenth, eleventh dimension. The twelfth dimension is the security gateway, and the thirteenth dimension is the gateway where the creator of the universe sits. It is a blank area in which everything and nothing exists all at the same time. So why are we having the, I'm just, just breaking it down. Why do we have eight of these slab sheets representations here, these eight squares here? And then we have this right here. Now, if we wanted to get further and get even more paranoid about it, right, let's go here. Now, this is the Last Supper. It's the late 19. 40s mural painting by Leonardo da Vinci. It says it's the place in the last us with Jesus and his 12 apostles on the eve of the crucifixion, right? Now, so check this out. We have six here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times six is 36. There's another numbers three and six three plus six equals what nine so if we was to pay attention to this painting right here we see da vinci put a lot of thought work into this painting when it comes to the numbers three six and nine now let's go back to the disciples right a lot of numbers seen in here is three and six right but if you pay attention to what I told you, what did I tell you? There's two tr transitional gateways. The fourth dimension, which is here, and the eighth dimension, which is here. Here are the dimensions. There's four dimensions on this side. There's four dimensions on this side. The ninth dimension is in the middle. That's the reason why these are shaped the same size and they go all the way down. But you notice these two windows are shorter. Why? Because they represent the uh uh a uh they represent the transitional gateway doorways of those dimensions now like i said this is all i'm just speaking theory here i'll go more into it later on but you see these two groups of disciples we got three here and we got three here that makes six on this side three here and three here that makes six on that side right now christ is in the middle of those three so <laughs> let's sneak and do let's randomly just sneak and do some math real quick I know it's not going to mean anything but I just want to try something real quick six divided by six okay so I did some math here I did six divided by six that equals one right so you got six divided by six equals the one. I, I just decided to do some random math. See, what people don't realize, Leonardo da Vinci is a genius. He hides numbers in everything. 
you can see the sequence of numbers three six and nine all throughout this painting if you look and pay attention heck if you even look and pay attention to the number of breads that are sitting here and, um you can break that down and find some the number of plates how many hands are being held up because if you notice his all his fingers are not being shown all the way all the hands are not being shown all the way it, you can break this down into so many things it's ridiculous let's look at the number of hands one two three four five uh six seven eight and nine right there nine hands on that side so you got one two three four uh five six seven you got seven hands on that side right and then if you include christ that's eight and nine hands it's 18 hands. 1 plus 8 equals 9. <coughs> like I said, I'm just throwing theories out there. We can even look and count the number of eyes. There's Da Vinci hides a lot of stuff in his drawings and his paintings that you can really break down. And if you analyze The Last Supper, it'll give you a whole bunch of stuff. Like, look at this design over here. You can even break that down and for it to mean something, right? Why is it high over here but low over here? All this can be broken down. Even, even if you break down the dimensions and frames in which the room is in. Everything can be broken down to have meaning to something. Now, what does this have to do with the secret society and secret families? Well, I believe that there are 12 secret families. And those 12 secret families work for the holy bloodline. They work for the bloodline of Yeshua. Yosis, who you want to call him, which is basically Hell Zeus. Right? I mean, just look at it. Hey, we can break down the alphabet and look at these numbers and look at the number to. Letter, letter Z equals the number 26. The letter E equals the number 5. That's 31. And then you can keep going. And you'll probably end up getting a number that equals something. All this can be broken down. So basically what it's saying is, is that there's not just a few secret families that run the world. There's one family that owns all the world's wealth that is making the move. They choose the presidents and leaders of every single country. Their main task from the very beginning, because they believe they are the direct descendants, the blood descendants of Christ, because they believe that Mary Madeline and Christ got together and had a child. But also, let's look at it like this. Let's look at some more meanings to the number 12. Christ, at the age of 12, left. Where did Christ go? Christ went to Kemet. Learned a lot of stuff. Came back. Taught it to people. But if you notice, Christ left. Look at the numbers. Look at it. Okay, so y'all don't believe me. So we're going to break it down even more. We're going to hit some conspiracies on y'all. Oh, this is from something else that I did. Let's go to file. Let's go to new. We don't want to say. Let, let's, let's hit some. Let's hit some. Uh, 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 number. Okay, so let's do this. Okay. So Christ was gone for 12 years, right? No, uh, 12, 12 years old. Christ left at 12 years old. Okay. 18 years he was gone, right? At age 30, came back, right? He came back to Jerusalem, right? Then when he came back to Jerusalem at age 33, he, uh, oh crap. At age 33, he died on the cross. So, if, <coughs> if Christianity is the one true religion on earth, why is it that the numbers in Christianity are so important as the so-called pagan religion? Because remember, these pagan religions... On the one that represent these numbers. Right? 
like I said, we're speaking on theory right now. We're not saying anything's fact. We're just speaking on theory. Like I said, I will go dive deep into an episode on theory when it comes to this. Now, let, let's see what all this, all this has meaning, right? The reason why I put this here. Because when we look at the number 12, 12 is right before teens, right? Right? So, when I do that, at age 13, is, okay, most boys go through puberty from ages 8 to 12, right? I think, I think it's 8 to 12. They say some girls go through puberty soon, right? I don't know why they think females mature faster, but whatever. Oh shit, I need to go to bed. So, when we look at 12, one plus two equals Three. One plus eight equals nine. Then you have three, and then three plus three equals six. So you got three, nine, three, six. Oh, you don't believe me? Okay, let's add these numbers up. Let's add these numbers up. Let's, let's go ahead and move this box real quick. Okay, so this equals three. This equals nine. This is basically just three, but this equals six. So if we ignore when he came back, right? Let's ignore when he came back, right? Three, six, and nine. What was three, six, and nine? Let's go back here and look again. Three, six, and nine. Enlightenment and spiritual awakening. You mean to tell me that Christ's entire life was an enlightenment and spiritual awakening? Like I said, let's look at the numbers. 12 years old, Christ left. He was gone for 18 years. And at age 30, he came back. And at age 33, he died on the cross. He died on the cross. I can't say he came back at age because I already said he's gone 18 years. So when we add 12 plus 18, he was 30. So how is it that Christ leaves at age 12? He's gone for almost exactly 18 years. And then he comes back and he dies on the cross at age 33, which is the reason why Freemasons don't go bell uh, 33. 33rd degree because they don't see themselves surpassing Christ think about it every numbers have meanings in everything see and here's the funny thing Christians want to go around and talk about how all these other pagan religions and spiritual and demon craft and, but you realize you do the exact same thing you accuse of being evil right you say people do witchcraft and speaking spells and stuff like that but you preach the power of the word of tongue, y'all hypocrites. When you say there's power in the word of tongue, is that not witchcraft? Oh, when you do it, it's okay. But when they, oh, that hypocrisy is kicking in, isn't it? Evil is evil, right? But like I said, when we look at it and we break it down, when we look at Christianity, Christianity follows the same numbers, three, six, and nine of spiritual enlightenment that has existed long before Christianity was even a thing on the earth. Even before the Jews even wrote the uh, Old Testament, this was going on. Earth is not 6,000 years old. It's already been proven that there's stuff way older than that. It's proven that there's text way older than that. So, that's what we gotta look at. Let's break it down, let's be for real. Let's stop playing games and let's be for real. But y'all don't realize these these numbers they they mean something. Now, if you don't believe me about it, you won't believe me. See, here's here's the reason why nine is the ultimate number. 
Y9 is ultimate holy number, right? In the universe, and Y9 is the whole number. Let me break it down to you. Let's take these three numbers here. Three. <coughs> Excuse me. Plus six equals nine. All right, three plus six equals nine. Nine plus nine equals 18. Right? One plus eight equals nine. So when we break it all down, nine is the holiest number. Nine is the highest number that can be obtained. Nine is the number of completion. Not seven. Nine is the number of completion. When you know these things, your life becomes way better. If you realize Nikola Tesla was a super genius and they had to destroy his character because they were afraid of how powerful he was. And these are the same part of the same evil society who basically took his inventions instead of using them to help the world, they're going to use them to destroy the world and control the world. But we got to look at it like that. Like, look, like, check this out. This is real stuff I'm, I'm showing you right now. And that's just for me breaking down from a, a picture because Leonardo da Vinci left us the clues. They, they le he left us the clues. Come on, three is where you get the Holy Trinity from. Six is the number of man. Notice, six is the number of man, right? Because we all born in the sin. And so Christ had to die on the cross for our sins conveniently at the age of 33 which 3 plus 3 equals 6 which is the number of man uh, I sound speaking theories oh and uh, when his powers kicked in was at the age of 12 which 1 plus 2 equals 3 the holy trinity And he was gone 18 years. 1 plus 8 equals 9. It took him 18 years to complete his journey. Which 9 is the number of completion. Man, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. This is a religion that was created to subjugate you and hide the truth directly to your face. And tell you that you are a fool. To take your own history and your own knowledge from you. There's no way you can say we're created in God's image. Right? There's no way you can say we're created in God's image and then turn around and say we are not God's. We are creator like. We are not the creator. We are creator like. So, that's my thing. We are creator-like. We're not creators ourselves. So, we need to pay attention to what's going on. I was going to make this video 33 minutes long. We need to pay attention to what's going on. Because Leonardo is putting the truth right in front of our faces. He's letting us know that all these people got their hand in the cookie jar. That's all, all their hands are coming out. And why is he pointing up? Why is it the one hand is pointing up? Why 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 is he pointing upward? Leonardo da Vinci is a genius. He's a genius for a reason. And everything he does, he does for a reason. Including this woman right here. That that's clearly a woman. Notice how, I think that's Judas. For some odd reason, Judas is the darkest color of everybody. So what are they trying to say? The, 
black race is cursed because Judas is the darkest of everybody betrayed Christ? Is that what they're saying? So, I'm going to go ahead. I just want y'all to think about that. I just want y'all to think about the sequence of numbers and how they relate to this painting. You got three, the three, you got three, two groups of three, right? Twelve disciples. Six divided by six equals the one. You got 36 squares up here. Three plus six equals nine. You got these four dimensions in the in this on each side, four dimensions on each side, and then you got this one in the middle, the one where the door where Christ sits in. This is the God dimension. This is the ninth dimension. This is the gateway to the God dimension, right? The dimension of higher enlightenment, the dimension of completion, basically which is number nine. These are transitional dimensions. These are windows, literal windows into the transition of dimensions. <coughs> Remember that. These are the dimensions we have access to directly. So like I said, you got three, six, and nine. Three dimensions. Two transitional dimensions. Between those, which equals a total of nine dimensions. So, I'm going to leave y'all with that. Like I said, this just, <clears throat> I'm not saying it's fact. We're just looking at some theories. Look at the comedic experience real quick. We're just looking at some theories. And we don't want to get on the sun part. You know, the son of God. The sun god. We're going we gonna to say that for another time, man. Y'all go ahead and enjoy yourselves. Have a good day. Be safe before I smack y'all in the face. See you.